Now for assessing the lungs. It's critical to understand the normal anatomy of the lungs. So starting with the lobes. The right side of the lung has three lobes and the left side only has two lobes. Now when we're listening to the lungs, we listen in between the ribs. This is called the intercostal space. So just think in between the ribs for intercostal is where we listen. Now the respiratory system sort of looks like an upside down tree. We have the trachea, also called the windpipe, which serves as the stump of the tree, branching off into the bronchus, the right and left. Then to the bronchi, our smaller branches there, and the bronchioles, the very tiny branches, eventually ending at the alveolar sacs, which I call the alveolar apples, because this is where all the action happens. As you know, the alveolar sac is where gas exchange occurs, exchanging CO2, that carbon dioxide, for oxygen. Well, if you don't know, now you know. We breathe out that CO2 and we breathe in that oxygen. Now it all happens here in the little capillary beds of each alveolus. It's critical to know this when we start breaking down the patho of various diseases. So if we have fluid in the lungs, like with pulmonary edema, typical for patients in heart failure, where we get heavy fluid all over the body, we get really wet lungs that block this oxygen from getting in. Or if these little alveoli collapse like an atelectasis, well then gas exchange can't happen and infection settles in, resulting in pneumonia, which we cover in a separate video. Click here to check out our brand new app-based NCLEX product, loaded with the highest quality NCLEX style practice questions, and complete with detailed video rationales that break down the question for you. So finally mastered all those darn select all that apply questions. Plus, all our NCLEX memberships come included with our entire library of over a thousand videos and study guides and cheat sheets. Come see why over 100,000 students have trusted their future to simplenursing.com. Click here to get started for free. So normally we breathe oxygen in and breathe out that CO2, that carbon dioxide, which I call carbon dye acid, since too much of it can put your body in acidosis. We even have a little song about this on iTunes and Google Play called Don't Stop Breathing. It's a parody to Don't Stop Believing from Journey. I'll play a little segment real quick. Just two real thin lungs Sit above the diaphragm Exchanging CO2 for oxygen Okay, hopefully you like that little segment. I'll add the full song at the end of this video, so be sure you stay till the end. Now for auscultation locations, we have anterior, which is the front, on the chest, and posterior on the back, where we mostly assess the lower lobes on the back. We want to position the patient upright in high Fowler's position. Point the diaphragm, the big part of the stethoscope, downward, and place it in the intercostal spaces, that part in between the ribs. Now, normal breath sounds are known as normal vesicular breath sounds, are soft and low-pitched breezy sounds. This key point is a need to know for Kaplan standardized exams. So, Kaplan mentions, normal breath sounds are vesicular breath sounds, soft and low-pitched breezy sounds heard over most of the peripheral lung fields. Okay, now for the good stuff, the assessment. We start on the front, the anterior, basically the chest. We want to start at the top, on the right side, above the clavicle, a.k.a above the collarbone. We listen for a full inhalation and a full exhalation. Then we move to the opposite side. Now, we want to compare the quality, the depth, as well as extra sounds. These extra sounds are called adventitious breath sounds. Then we move to the second ICS, midclavicular, basically meaning the middle of the clavicle. An ICS is that intercostal space in between the ribs. Then we move over to the opposite side and compare the same thing. The quality, the depth, as well as those extra sounds, those adventitious breath sounds. And then so on and so forth, down to the third intercostal space, compare, 
all the way down to the sixth ICS, mid-axillary. So just think mid-axillary is middle of the armpit. A for axillary, A for armpit. This assesses the lower lobes of the lung, also called the bases of the lungs, or the basillary portions of the lungs. Now a little side note here. This is the best place to assess for fluid in the lungs, like with clients in heart failure. So just think HF and heart failure, HF for heavy fluid. And the lung sounds we're listening for is crackles, sounding like Velcro being pulled apart, kind of like this. Pretty crazy, right? So the memory trick we use, think crackles are for crazy fluid. Now be sure to watch the abnormal lung sound video because we get into the top tested questions for pharmacology as well as nursing interventions. So remember, it's called abnormal lung sounds video. Be sure to watch that right after this video. Now for the posterior assessment, in order to get a good clean listen without muffling, have the client lean forward with their hands in their lap to separate the shoulder blades. Start in the same way. Start by listening at the top, then the opposite side to compare, and then down, listen again, over and compare. So on and so forth, working your way down. Sounds pretty simple enough, right? <laughs> well, what wasn't simple were the top missed key points on various question banks. One of those key points was hypoxia. So hypo meaning low, Oxia meaning oxygen, so low oxygen for hypoxia. Now, Hesse mentions, which areas would the nurse expect blue discoloration in a patient with hypoxia? So, blue discoloration is that cyanosis. Now, the answer is earlobe, nail bed, and conjunctiva, that portion of the eye. And another question, a patient with long-term hypoxia experiencing respiratory distress. Which signs and symptoms require monitoring by the nurse? Another select all that apply here. So, key terms, vertigo, that dizziness, one of the first signs of low oxygen is that mental status change, or even this dizziness here. Clubbing or round fingernail beds, this is more of a long-term hypoxia. And increased pulse rate, known as tachycardia. Now, Kaplan mentions the most important objective data when determining if a client is hypoxic. The key term here is most important objective data. So, we're looking for a lab value. And the lab value was abnormal blood gases, those ABGs, which we go into a full video in our acid-base imbalance lectures. Now, the second key point is dyspnea, that difficulty breathing or that shortness of breath. So dis, just think difficult, and penia, just think lungs. So dyspnea, that difficulty breathing in the lungs. Now Hesse mentions, correct subjective assessment of dyspnea. When the patient states, it's hard for me to breathe and I feel short-winded all the time. And another question, priority interventions for a patient with breathing problems. Select all that apply. So number one, we ensure the airway is open, we monitor O2 saturations, place the client in high Fowler's position, and evaluate the effectiveness of respiratory effort. Lastly, a little bit of a weird question here. Kaplan asks the correct assessment for tactile frematis, and we use the ulnar and palmar surfaces of the hands. Now you're probably asking yourself, what the monkey is that? Well. Tactile frematis assessment is not commonly tested, but it's used to assess the airflow within the lungs by feeling vibrations. We basically just ask the client to repeat a phrase over and over again, like 99 or 123, 123. So increased vibrations means increased inflammations, basically inflamed lung tissue, typically for infections like pneumonia. And decreased tactile frematis means decreased airflow, like in asthma and COPD. But once again, this is a nice to know and not necessarily a need to know, since it's not commonly tested.
this song goes out to your lungs. You know, they work so hard for so long. And sometimes we don't give them enough credit. So lungs, this one's for you. Just two real thin lungs. Sit above the diaphragm. Exchanging CO2 for oxygen Just some diseases that Chronically obstruct the palm Let's learn about our BAM and SLAM farm drugs Nursing students, where are you at? We're here in the pulmonary unit Asthma, COPD patients, where you at? Raise those inhalers. Let me see them. Beta 2 agonists. These end in terolite albuterol. Anticholinergics end in PM light. Atroban diprotropium. Mad low. Damn things And then feeling like the Oplin Slam drugs Steroids all in metal A synthetic form of natural corticosteroids Leucotrine Modified Don't forget Luke likes to sing them as well Stabilizes like chrome Working hard for gas exchange The alveolus wants to feel Doing anything to change that gas Just one more time Beta 2 agonist Your rescue bronchodilator Gets your heart rate going real high Makes your mouth really Dry in steroids. Wash your mouth out with water infection. And open sores may come. If you don't, so wash out. Mad loads and things. Acts like caffeine to your heart. It's a Side effects that may come with the Ophelin. Don't stop breathing. Hold on to that oxygen. Albuterol before your corticosteroid. Don't stop breathing. Wash your mouth out after steroids. Methyl sand things is like caffeine to your heart. Don't stop learning. Go to simplenursing.com. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this segment. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.